Hey guys, and welcome to a battle between the freshest forces of the Beastmen up against the mighty Dowie Hordes. And yes, we're going to be showcasing a few more new bits today as well. Predominantly Malagor, the new Dwarf Lord, as well as some glorious Ogre Mercenaries. And I must admit, I've been having all kinds of fun with these Mercenaries. They're a huge laugh in general, but can be quite pricey. So let's go over our, over our build nice and quickly. We'll have a load of Ungor Herds, just dotted in a nice cheeky little Vanguard here. And their main job shall be to protect the Ungor Raiders and be saturated upon by the Man Eaters. Now, Man Eaters with great weapons do some pretty damn disgusting damage. And I have some pretty beautiful moustaches to go with it. 110 weapon strength with a relatively solid 42 melee attack, meaning they're going to connect quite a lot with those big hitting damages. Oh yeah, they can pack a punch. They also have the bonus of being anti-large and having that glorious ogre charge, which when attacking braced charge defenders, this unit only loses half of its charge bonus. So they're going to hit you pretty damn hard no matter what. And we're going with three of them here. And the idea again, yeah, saturate on top of the Ungor Herds and dish out the damage to those armor, very heavily armored Dowie forces. Over on the far flank here, we do have the Mornfang Cavalry. And the Mornfang Cavalry, probably the best, I think, of the Ogre Mercenaries, at least from what I've seen so far. They can occasionally struggle and be a bit slumberous for Cavalry, as far as their mobility goes, with a impressive but not insanely good 75 speed and rather slow turn angles. But they can certainly pack a punch, and they are, in fact, cheaper than their Man-Eater counterparts, as well as the Pistol is. In fact, these guys come in, I believe, at 1,200 gold, whereas the Great Weapons come in at a whopping 1,400. Likewise, so do the Man Eaters with Ogre Pistols that we see on this flank. But again, I think the Ogre Pistols are probably going to be second best with the Mor Mornfang Cavalry as well as the top two uh, Ogre Mercenaries in the game. They've got some really cool models as well. I have the little shields attached to them as they're defending their bellies. We have some best of God herds over on the flank, and we are seeing the new pretty damn cool colour scheme here of Malagor the Dark Omen. And all around, I'm a big fan of his new faction, including its little army sigil. Malagor the Dark Omen has had quite a few changes. Not only does he fly now, yes indeed, he just swoops along. He looks so funny. I love everything about it. But his spells have indeed changed. Now, we're bringing quite a lot of the uh, common stuff here. Pendulum, uh, Mantle of Gorok, which has been vastly improved in my opinion, as well as Savage Dominion. But he can also now bring a few different laws of magic that we're not showcasing just here today. For our opponent and the Mighty Dwarfs, they have a few cool units as well. They have the campaign exclusive. I should mention the Ogres are also campaign exclusive. But we have a yoked Carnosaur. So it's a poor little Carnosaur. I'm going to give him a little bit of a head scratch anyway. Though he is a good boy. He's been captured. And you can see these horrible little manacles around him shall be uh, kind of turning him into a obedient beast. Which I find hard to believe. I think the Carnosaur is just playing the long game here. So he can feast upon some Dowie. Load of miners, miners of blasting charges, long beards, as well as some iron breakers in the secondary line, supported by a grudge thrower and more slayers. But leading the force, and this is kind of the new coolest stuff we're getting into now, Foric Ironbrow shall be coming in on his mighty rune anvil. Not only is it a really cool model, I think Foric is going to be very, very competitive. He's got access to some really useful runes all round and nice battlefield abilities. He has the Rune of Slowness, Rune of Speed, Rune of Wrath and Ruin, as well as the Rune of Negation and Rune of Doom on him. Now, Rune of Doom is very powerful. It's plus 24 melee attack and cause fear, but you can pop this continuously. And it's basically the Dragon Horn for Imric, but giving extra melee attack to dwarfs is very, very scary stuff indeed. He also has Forex Rune Armor, giving plus 15 armor and 10% flame resistance to those around him, as well as the Master of the Ancient Law. One thing that he does, which is really damn cool, apart from the immune psychology and all that good standard stuff you'd expect, is if you cast a spell near him, you are guaranteed to take miscast damage, or a 50% chance or 100% chance, we'll have to look it up after the battle, but yeah, it is very scary stuff. And one character that I haven't seen any other YouTuber really delve into yet is Hans of Valor Harrison, is what I'm going to say his name is, butchering the pronunciation, we're going to call him Hans for now. And yes, the sub-faction for Forrick does indeed get their own special hero, and that is going to be Hans. He's an ethereal thane, much in the same vein as the clan Ungrund ones. Very powerful, big old pain in my butt. Causes terror, is ethereal of course, comes in with the Silver Horn of Vengeance, as well as a Rune of Dismay, which does in fact lower the speed, charge speed, and charge bonus of all those around him. He can bring the Iron Beard's Ring, and of course is unbreakable, immune to psychology, and all that good stuff. 
But I'm telling you, you do not expect Hans to appear on the battlefield. You better look out, because he can certainly dish out the damage. And normally when people go up against um, Clan Grims, you kind of expect one or two ethereal characters. But he certainly does throw another spanner in the works. If you see your opponent bring Thoric, you may have to you know, bank on bringing some magic damage. And Hans can be pretty scary indeed. So we're going to be advancing our forces right now. We do have the Man Eater uh, Ogre's pistols here. Going to be firing in. Aiming at those Iron Breakers. They have relatively decent armor piercing shots. So I really want to try to punish the Iron Breakers where possible. Malagor just flying high up in the skies at the moment. Man Eaters are looking to engage. I'm a little bit slow here. So we're not actually uh, supporting the Ungols as well as we should be. Master of Slowness does go down on these guys, slowing them down and eating those blast enchanters. My god, that is some disgusting value. Man Eaters do clobber in now onto the miners. And you're getting some good engagements there. Ungol Raiders pour fight into the Grudge Throne. On the left hand side, we've popped the Mantle of Gorog, which is now massively better in my opinion. Plus 40 melee attack and 50% weapon uh, arm piercing weapon damage is pretty disgusting. We can surround that Carnosaur and try to drag it down as quickly as possible. We're doing a good job whacking it with our clubs, trying to drag it down, but still at the end of the day, it is a Carnosaur and it will take some time to defeat. But Mornfang Cavalry doing a fantastic job so far there on the left. Ungol Raiders continue to pour fire in here to the Grudge Throw, doing some lovely work. We do have the Man Eater Ogre Pistols, lacing shot after shot, continue to fire in to those Iron Breakers, trying to rack up that damage. You can see the Man Eater Great Weapons have managed to force their way through the Miners relatively effectively here. Just a big old piles out of blood and mucus and body parts wherever the Man Eaters do indeed go. And they do pack a big punch. Now can we move on to the Iron Breakers, whose massive melee defense though should be able to help them a little bit more. We do summon a Saigor here in the back lines, looking to throw some rock damage down, probably going to be aiming at the Iron Breakers. And Malagor does swoop in for the kill. He has some ridiculously cool charge animations, where he kind of like pulls his wings in and bomb dives down to the enemy. And this Carnosaur just won't go down, we've been piercing it with Ungol Raider arrows. And the Morlfang Cavalry did do some pretty good work there as well, but they can be maneuvering now away from this side of the battlefield and charging in to meet Hans and Thorek. Thorek on his Mighty Rune at Toilet Seat is quite powerful and tanky, but you can see he himself is dwarfed by the strength of the Man-Eaters, who are getting in here with a decent surround. Hans, though, the ever-loyal bodyguard, dishing out the damage as it comes in. Ungol Raiders continue to fight in where possible. Looks like we are repositioning them at the moment. And the Morphin Cavalry still struggling to kill that Carnosaur. In fact, I've just realised Yoke Carnosaurs are unbreakable. That would explain a bucket ton, and it goes down. Unfortunately, you won't be seeing this bad boy in the multiplayer scene unless it is in a custom battle. I believe that goes the same for the Ogre Mercenaries. Although I'm sure we can sort out some uh, tournaments where we get these guys in action. Malagor is nice and safe up in the sky. You can see he's taking a decent amount of damage and that's all because of those miscasts that Thorog Ironbrow does force you to do. Big rock shots coming in but unfortunately missing those Ironbreakers who are falling back. Man Eaters charging. They've got some really cool attack animations as well with their gigantic sledgehammer of clubs. Boom! There you go. Limbs and heads exploding in all directions. It's glorious to see. We are starting to run out of steam here a little bit. We do have the cavalry bouncing around, but there's a lot of long bids and iron breakers left on the field. Balance power is slightly in our favour, but it does drop down a bit as that Saigor does dissipate once more. Ungol Raiders still have decent ammunition. I'm going to try to focus down at Thoric Ironbrow now, take away my enemy's leadership, and then break the rest of his forces. That at least is the plan. Ungol Raiders will, uh, Ungol Herd, I should say, are struggling a little bit. So in come the cavalry, the more fine cavalry, no less. And it looks like we are going to be buffing them up as well. Probably once again, I would assume, with the mantle, we do indeed. But as you can see, Malachor is going to be taking damage each time he does pop a spell here. We are up to now a whopping 81 melee attack with 180 weapon strength. Yeah, Thoric Eyebrow, he's tanky, but no one's that tanky. And he's going to be going down here with Malagor crushing his skull. And with Thoric leaving the battlefield here, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. But there's still a ton of dwarfs. We have long bids all over the place. Grudge Thrower has returned to the field. And we have Iron Breakers as well. Ungol Raiders are going to be moving up to engage with the enemy and continue to pour on that fire. We are kiting poor Hans around the battlefield a little bit. Looks like we are going to be coming down with a quite nicely placed pendant, if I do say, and compliment myself there. Hitting those long beards, doing some good work. Morphan Cavalry are up to two, uh, two chevrons. They may have started with one, though, unless I'm mistaken. And they have been terrified. So these guys are not immune to psychology. They don't cause terror themselves. I believe they are only, indeed, cause fear. So they're going to be running away here from the mighty Hans, who's rallying the dwarf forces against us, which is rather scary stuff. 
Looks like we have managed to finish off the enemy leader though, which is always a plus. Ungle Raiders are now certainly able to use up all of their ammunition, firing into the rear of these longbeards as the cavalry once again comes with a thunderous charge, leaping into battle. These guys do kind of remind me a tiny bit of the bears that we may indeed see from Kislev, or will see from Kislev, uh, we, that we've seen in their trailer already. Coming in doing some glorious work for those good old bloody tusks, rendering the Longbeard's armour useless. We're going to be able to break up two units here, which is rather nice stuff. Hans is trying to push back the man-eaters. Now, they actually still have a decent amount of ammunition. The battle's been going on now for just over six minutes, and they've been firing for a good four minutes or so. And they're pretty good melee combatants all round. Coming with a whopping 42 melee attack, 37 melee defence, 110 weapon strength. They can certainly dish it out still. Cavalry unfortunately has been forced off, but it's been putting in a pretty damn impressive show. We're going to be buffing up the Ungor Hood once more. I'm a big fan of the mantle of Gorok now. It's so cool. They're going to be charging in to try and deal with the Longbeards. As you can see, floating high above the sky, Malagor just wistfully swinging. And down he comes with his bird attack animation, like something out of Hollow Knight. I, I love his little dive where he pulls his, tucks his wings in and comes down like a drop pod ODST style. And that is going to be enough to break up the Longbeards. Bounce Pat is slightly in our favour. It looks like the majority of the dwarves have been beaten back to their Dowie holds. But Iron Breakers, there is still a ton of them on the field. We have 37 here and 47 up to this closest point to us right now. And a full health Hans of Vala Harassan is what I'm going to go. I change his name every time I say it. I can't help myself. But 65 melee attack is certainly no joke, particularly on an ethereal character. And I'm going to be kiting back with the Man Eaters at the moment. Just trying to finish off the rest of my opponent's build. Ironbreakers get shot in the rear here as the Man Eaters do try to dish them out. And Malagor dives down as well with his little bird body crushing the skulls of these Ironbreakers. Man Eaters does a fling a couple of dwarfs over there. Looks like he's got an arrow in his eye which actually just disappeared from him there. And a nice bloody smile on him right about now. We're going to be using just some of our beat up units to chase away enemy routing troops like these Ironbreakers. I really don't want them coming back into the fray at the moment. I'm going to try to cycle charge the Iron Breakers to Doom. Man Eaters probably want to ignore Hans for now. Just kite back. I'll rotate round and get a lovely attack into the Iron Breakers. The last Man Eater is going to be coming in. Look how eager he is to get engaged in combat. Thump, smash, and devour. Poor Iron Breakers are on to having the best time now as more Man Eaters do come from the rear as well. Starting to butcher the little dwarfs. But they are holding their line for so uh, for now. It actually looks like our man-eater may be biting the bullet here. Down to just 168 health. He doesn't really want to stick this one out. And I don't blame him. Malagor's going to have to do quite a lot of swooping animations. Now. His wings burst forth there. As he uh, gets to his butcher's work. Trying to finish off these iron breakers who are holding so well. Down to just five leadership at the moment. Hans is here to support them. And we're in danger of getting terror routed. Which could cause us all kinds of uh, unnecessary problems. The man eater still going strong actually. With 144 HP. Has the, decided to stick this one out. And we can get some glorious action here. On the ogres uh, attack animations. They are pretty damn beefy and huge. You can see they really do uh, make the dwarfs kind of stand in their shadow. It looks like Hanzo is currently dealing with a rather pesky Ungor who now is lacking a couple of limbs. Big old slashing hacks and slices. They do fire their pistols in combat as well, uh, but more as an animation. It's still kind of dealing that melee attack damage. Malagor once again is in a swoop up into the skies, whirl around and twirl back into the enemy. It's just so funny to see Malagor in action. It's, it's so cool that they've changed him and made him flying. 110 speed is ridiculous ridiculously fast and I'm all about it. Look at him go! Trying to uh, pull out from those uh, nasty little iron breakers. Looks like they're trying to path on top of him but he gets back up into the skies and it's going to swing around once more. And we finally do break the iron breakers which is certainly good news for us and now it's going to be a matter of trying to cycle charge Hans to death which is easier said than done. I mean Malagor has 55 melee attack which isn't too shabby but Hans is a bit of a beast. Man Eaters trying to surround him right now. I'm going to fast forward because this goes on for a long, long time. Malagor's going to float out to the side, just shatter the miners and slowly bring in all my forces. A lot of which do start to get terror routed. I'm getting a little bit nervous at this point. The Man Eaters are doing okay, but they really do need Malagor to uh, assist here. I probably could have cycled charge as well with the, the Man Eaters. Um, because they do have a uh, 41 charge bonus, which certainly isn't too bad. Unfortunately, all our Ungors do betray us and start to flee. Bounce power is heavily in our favour right now. And luckily, Malagor does come in with a pretty useful item here. 
which is indeed the Icons of Vilification. Plus 12 leadership, keeping our boys in the fight. It is a little bit scary time we pull out and uh, you know go away from them. We also have something wicked comes this way. Minus 4 leadership. I think it's going to be something that's going to work really well with the Javis life. And I'll try to showcase that guy with, with you guys when I'm allowed to. Which will be very, very soon. I'm going to be bringing you guys all of the glorious DLC. Um, uncensored access. Very, very soon. Very, very soon. It's going to be uh, pretty damn awesome. I'm very excited. Many of his are dishing out the damage. Once again, Malagot is going to be beating down the Dwarf. And at the end of the day, Dwarfs, I think, have been improved for the most part with the small changes they've had this patch and this DLC. But they still do suffer, of course, from being cycle charged into oblivion. Although not before Malagot does uh, fall down there. Big old Edbutt coming in from that man eater on Hans. who's trying his best, but Malagor is a uh, pretty scary customer. Look at that for a little shot as uh, the man eaters do try to beat down their enemy. Oh, that's, uh, that's some beautiful stuff right there. That is some beautiful action. And down Hans goes. So, that was a pretty damn awesome game there. Hope you guys enjoyed. You can see the cool little emblem right now. I'm not going to be showing the end screens um, of any battles I do today or tomorrow. Because I don't want to accidentally reveal anything that I'm not meant to reveal. But uh, I'll tell you what. Those, the damage value I did check. The Mournful... The Mournful... Oh, no, not Mournful. Oh, my God. I can't remember. The Mournful... The big cavalry guys, whatever they're called. The big old scary ogre cavalry performed amazing here. And I think buffing them up, charging them into combat, really can do some pretty disgusting damage value. Man eaters are great weapons. I think it can be very good. But again, coming in at 1,400 gold is pretty scary stuff all ramped. All throughout, I think the Ogre Kingdom mercenaries aren't going to be like game-breakingly superly powerful. Um, yes, they may be a campaign exclusive, but I certainly think I'll be able to get them involved in King of the Hills and probably even some tournaments as well. And um, the changes to Malagor, big thumbs up from me. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed. I'm uh, apologies as well. I feel bad because I'm not like releasing my usual content at the moment and kind of getting out to you guys a load of videos every day and all that kind of good stuff. But I am currently on a different version of the game, so I can't really uh, showcase replays like I normally do. But that will be changing very, 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 very soon, I do promise, in the next few days. But anyway, guys, until then, what did you think of this battle? If you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, feel free. It will keep you up to date as we cover this glorious DLC and Total War Warhammer action into the future. Comment down below what were your favourite parts of this battle, your favourite units, what you're most looking forward to. And when we are allowed to reveal everything to you, what units would you like me to showcase the most? There are links down below in the description to my Patreon where you can support the channel, Discord where you can submit replays to me, keep up to date with my channel and chill out with a load of cool people, as well as a link to my Games Planet account is down below so you can get this DLC and all future Total War Warhammer stuff and current stuff at a discounted price. But anyway guys, until next time, peace peace. And as always, stay awesome.